Uh, right, all right. Shalom, Mankim. Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Hakwadash. The honest the apostles, elders, and bishops of Great Millstone who do rule well. Peace and salutations to the Akim, doing the work in truth and sincerity to you all. I say Shalom. And today I wanted to bring a lesson in regards to the so called wicked, which we know him to be Esau, Edom, according to Malachi 4 uh, 1 and 4. You know, where it says that Esau, Edom is the border of wickedness. Okay? I wanted to go to, uh, um, you know, just a quick understanding of, of, of who we're dealing with as a nation, man. We're dealing, we're dealing with the man that was created to be the wicked, okay? All right, when you read the book of Isaiah 10, it talks about um, Esau being the rod of the Lord's anger, okay? Babylon is usually um, compared to, you know, ancient, well, America is usually compared to ancient kingdoms, that were wicked, like, you know, the ancient Babylon, the ancient Sodom and Gomorrah, the ancient uh, uh, Assyrian uh, government, all right? And these governments, they all had the children of Israel in some ancient Egypt in captivity in some form or, or fashion, okay? So it's the book of Psalms 10, starting at verse 1, it says, Why standest thou afar off, O Lord, Yahweh? Why hidest thou thy face in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let, the be, let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined, right? And we can get a clear account of that. When you read the book of Esther, it talks about Hagag, the Edomite, and how he tried to come against the children of Israel by having them all executed, right? He wanted to, you know, commit a genocide, so to speak, right? But the Lord, you know, lifted up the standard against this devil, and the children of Israel were saved, okay? I forget what... what um, holy day we have in regard to that okay but the end result of Haman Malone is that I mean Haman Malone which we call vocab Malone Haman but the end result of Haman was that you know he built gallows to hang Israelites but he himself was the one that was actually hung on those gallows you see so even though he imagined a wicked device against the children of Israel the Lord had had him be taken by his own wicked you know uh, uh plans all right it says in verse 3 for the wicked boasteth in his heart's desire and blessed blesseth the covetous whom the lord abhorreth right and a covetous person and we can go into that is somebody who hoards things for himself or he wants things that other people have so like it says to cut off again by it says to cut off break off gain by unrighteous violence to get finish be covetous to be greedy <laughs> okay so it says here, the wicked through his pride of his countenance will not seek after the most high. But going back to verse three says, for the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesses what? The greedy. The ones who, 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 who cannot be, their appetites cannot be satisfied. All right. I like that word covetous. I like the definition of that. Right. When you say it in Hebrew. I think it's uh, Batazai, 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 okay? Once again, it means to be, to gain by unrighteousness. And we know that Esau, Edom, man, hey, look, he's gained so much by his wickedness, man. When we look at all the treaties that he's broken with the Native Americans to obtain the, their, their land, okay? He, he surveyed their land. He said he wanted it. So what did he do? He murdered, you know, these people and took their land and stuffed them on reservations. You see? It says the wicked through his pride of his countenance will not seek after the most high. The most high is not at all his thoughts. And it's true. Yo, Babylon. It's like they used to live off of biblical principles, man. If I'm not mistaken, they I think they had the Ten Commandments in front of some type of government building at one point. They probably removed it by now because really they don't keep to the laws of the Heavenly Father. But the Most High is not at all in the mind of Esau, Edom, man. Like, this devil, he's always thinking about wickedness. Do you think that he's thinking about how to please the Lord? Because if, if that was the case, he wouldn't do the chemtrails, all right? He, he would respect the land Sabbaths. He wouldn't be putting pork in everything. But he doesn't care about the Heavenly Father, nor about the ways of the Heavenly Father, okay? The ways of the Heavenly Father are grievous to him. As it says in verse 5, it says, his, his ways are all grievous. Thy judgments are far off out far above out of his sight 
for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. And this is what he's doing now. In these modern times, Esau, Edom, through his armies, is puffing up at other nations, man. Verse 6 says, He saith in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never, never be in adversity. You see the pride? He, th he thinks nobody can touch him. And his pride. But the scripture says that the heart is, is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Right? This is Jeremiah 17 and 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So Esau, Edom, he's deceiving himself, man. Well, really, the Lord is the one that got him in that trick bag because he was created to be the, 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 the wicked. He was created to be crooked. The children of the Lord, the Israelites, we were created to be righteous. We went off. We became a degenerate plant. You see? It says, he said, he has said in verse six, he hath said in his heart, I shall not be moved. I shall not be in adversity. But really, I mean, and that's because America's really never been, you know, really penetrated. This is why they, the scripture calls America virgin daughter of Babylon, because America really hasn't been invaded yet. But that time is coming. Right. But right now, his pride got him got him thinking that, you know, he's a shit because no nation could come up against him because of his armies. And verse seven says his mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. This is Esau Edom. When it comes to his child support system, when it comes to the tax laws, when it comes to the ability to 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 to, to get loans or borrow money, yo Esau Edom, he 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 charges you interest. He charges you usury. Okay. He takes what you have. He doesn't let you have it. If you're not paying him every year, every so often, he take whatever it is that you have. He takes it from you. Okay, he doesn't allow you to live as a sovereign citizen. You are dependent upon Esau, Edom, and his system, aka the government. And he doesn't keep to his own word. In verse eight, says he sitteth in the lurking places of the villages in secret places. Doth he murder the innocent? Right, he's talking about Jake. We're the innocent man. We haven't done nothing to Esau, Edom outside of just have the birthright. Okay. He said in the lurking places of villages and secret places that he doth murder the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor. I think in, and recently there was a place, I forget where, where they were, were burying Jake, man, that, that passed away under the custody of the police. They're finding this cemetery full of so-called Negroes, man. With no names and families are just finding out about their, their missing loved ones being buried back here. And that was being done by the authorities of that town. Esau Edom is, a, you know, let me tell you something. And this is why the Lord is exposing this devil on a high level. Okay. It says in verse nine, he lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. He doth not catch. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. He croucheth and humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. Right. So he comes, you know, bowing and looking like he's all he's saying sweet words. Scripture says, though, his words are smooth as butter. Salaka, let me get that. He saw Edom, his words are smooth as butter, man. But his but wickedness was, was in his heart. Let me see. Smooth butter. Psalms 55 and 21. It says the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war is in his heart. His words are softened in oil, yet were they drawn swords. This is this is the characteristic of the so-called white man, yo. He is wicked as hell. Verse 11, he said in his heart, the most high hath forgotten. He hideth his face. He will never see it. And the, and the scripture says, yo, that the law requires that which is past, man. Okay? He requires that which is past. The most high don't forget, but in his mind, the, the wicked said that he did forget. Okay? Let me grab that too. This is Ecclesiastes 3.15. That which has been is now. And that which is to be hath already been, and the most high requireth that which is past. Okay? So the Lord, he, he don't forget, man. He's the same God yesterday, today. See, our time frame and the most highest time frame are two different things, man. He doesn't abide by our time frame. He doesn't live in our time frame. 
Okay? It says, He has said in his heart, The Most High hath forgotten. He hideth his face. He will never see it. Arise, O Yahweh, O power. Lift up thy hand. Forget not the humble. Wherefore doth the wicked contemn the Most High? He hath said in his heart, Thou wilt not require it. Thou hast seen it. For thou beholdest mischief and spite to requite it with thy hand. The poor committeth himself unto thee. Thou art the helper of the fatherless. Break thou the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness till thou find none. The Lord is king forever and ever. Uh, the heathen are perished out of his hand. The Lord Yahweh hath heard the desire of the humble. Thou wilt prepare their heart. Thou wilt cause thine ear to hear. The judge, Salakia, to judge the fatherless and oppress the man of the earth, Salakia, to judge the fatherless and the oppressed, that the man all of the earth may no more oppress. And who's the man of the earth? Esau, Edom, man. Scripture it says, Job 9, 24, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. So we know that Esau, Edom is the one that's, the, that's oppressing the children of the Most High God, which today are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Like the brother Samark, he likes to say, look, Esau has all these different plans on the books for Jake, man. Operation God, Garden Plot, King Alfred plan. Okay? And these and these are all plans that are put in place to persecute Jake, man. Okay? So with that, man, hey, Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. Lord willing, we're able to, you know, to point out who the wicked of the world is. And Lord willing, you, you know, you, you, you take heed to these lessons. All right? And start to separate yourself from, from this man's system because really he has... He does not have the good intentions of, 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 of our people, right? The nation of Israel in mind at all. You see? So with that, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rachah Kodash. Hey, to you all I say Shalom, Kwam Yasha'Allah. Shalom.